Hi to all students in Introduction to Sociology. I'm Dr. Eileen smith Cabros, and I'm sitting here in my office, and it's really nice to meet all of you in person. Today I want to talk a little bit about the sociological imagination, and one of my very favorite sociologists that you're going to be reading about this term, whose name is C. Wright Mills. In 1955, there was a classic movie starring matinee idol James Dean, and it was called, maybe some of you know, Rebel Without a Cause. Even if you don't know the movie, maybe some of you have seen the picture from the movie. Here it is. That's James Dean right there, and Natalie Wood. And it's a very iconic picture. He's an iconic movie star, and I call sociologist C. Wright Mills Rebel With a Cause because he was very rebellious in his time, and he definitely had a lot of causes that he believed in. He was a professor, and C. Wright Mills had his own leather jacket and motorcycle that he often drove to work. He wrote about this idea called the sociological imagination in the 1950s in the United States. And your textbook author, John Mascionis, writes about C. Wright Mills in chapter one. So please make sure you read that. Um, I want to tell you about the ideas behind the sociological imagination, and um, hopefully you will enjoy them as much as I do. Basically, the sociological imagination is the idea that our lives are a part of world history. And this is an idea that most people probably never consider. It was Mill's idea in the sociological imagination. He believed that people usually separate what they consider their private problems from public problems or societal problems or issues. Even though, very often, it's trends in society or societal challenges or failings, depending on how you look at them, that create or feed problems like poverty or recessions or homelessness, for example. The current economic problems provide a perfect example for us to discuss what Mills was talking about. People today who have lost jobs, sometimes due to outsourcing or have lost houses in the epidemic of foreclosures that has happened in this country, often feel like this string of events, losing a job or losing a house, can only happen to them. But in reality, we all know that these things have happened to many people during the recession. As a matter of fact, almost everyone seems to know someone who has lost a job um, or is worried about losing a job or someone who is facing foreclosure. As I wrote this lecture, the unemployment rate in Florida, to give you an example, was 8.6%, definitely not an individual issue, and 2.87 million pieces of property, quote, got notices of default, auction, or repossession just in 2010, according to Levy and Gopal in 2011's Bloomberg report. So in our society, where all of our identities seem to be very connected to our jobs and we're owning a house is a part of the American dream, to have either of these events happen to you is devastating. So are these individual troubles then? Or, as Mill said, are they connected to public issues? Mills would definitely argue the latter. After all, many of the recent job losses that are in the statistics aren't just because individuals failed to perform well. That's not the reason most of these people lost their jobs. Some of the jobs were outsourced to countries where labor is cheaper, for example. Um, other job losses happened because people worked for companies that um, failed when consumer spending crashed. Many foreclosures, to look at that issue, uh, were tied not just to individual failures, you know, the inability of people to, to pay their mortgages, but to systemic failures, system-wide failures, 
in responsible lending practices. So Mill's sociological imagination then suggests that in ordinary times, average people do not connect their lives and the events in their lives to greater societal movements, societal challenges, societal pressures. But people instead usually see their perceived individual problems as their own problems. But when we look closer, we find how these individual problems are very much connected to history in the making at the time. Um, occasionally, all the pieces really do fall into place, and some people make the connection between their own lives and um, problems and things that need to be addressed or changed in larger society. So according to the sociological imagination, positive changes can result when people make these connections and do something to promote change. So how could change happen? What does that change part mean? Well, for example, today, people might get together and demand more positive change in lending practices or foreclosure practices. But the question is, will they? Will this be one of those moments that Mills described where people use the sociological imagination to make connections between their own lives and historic events that are, are happening at the time? Will they seek solutions? I'm going to let you decide. See you next lecture.